Good evening and welcome to the Buffalo Academy of the Sacred Hearts Christus Super Omnia Celebration. I'm Kristen Morand, a proud 2016 graduate from Sacred Heart. Tonight I'm joining you from my home here in Central Virginia with of course a taste of home, the 716 skyline here behind me. After Sacred Heart I went to Ithaca College where I studied journalism and graduated in May of 2020. Right now I'm a reporter with ABC 13 WSET News in the Lynchburg, Roanoke, Virginia market. For me and for today's students, Shea is a place of opportunity and community. A Sacred Heart education sets the stage for whatever that young woman may dream of achieving. Girls learn, form friendships, and grow as strong individuals. I'm so appreciative of my time at Sacred Heart. Although I transferred in my sophomore year, I was quickly welcomed with open arms and knew this was the place for me. The opportunities it gave me and the ways I was pushed to challenge myself helped me grow and develop into the woman that I am today. Tonight, we will hear from our newest distinguished alumni, Jane Geese Rasmussen, class of 1970, and Mary Ann Kuharski-Long, class of 1973. They each had the chance to sit with a current student and reflect on their experiences and accomplishments. We will also hear from Franciscan Charisma Award winner, Mrs. Jean Cuddy, as she shares her appreciation for the Shea education her six daughters received. That education reflected the Franciscan values she and her husband lived out each day. Tonight, we will be honoring Mary Ann Kuharski Long, a member of the class of 1973. The past 18 months have reminded us all the critical role healthcare professionals play. Mary Ann's commitment to nursing spans 30 years, and she currently serves as Senior Vice President of Nursing at Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center. Mary Ann's classmates and colleagues nominated her for her long commitment to helping those in need and for her active mentorship and support of the woman with whom she works with. Mary Ann came back to Shea to discuss her experiences with senior Jordan Carlson, an aspiring biomedical engineer who dreams of one day working at Roswell Park. Here's their conversation. I'm Mary Ann Long, I'm the Senior Vice President of Nursing and the Chief Nursing Officer at Roswell Park Cancer Institute. And I too am a, I'm a graduate of Sacred Heart Academy many moons ago. Um, but it's a wonderful place and I'm really delighted to be back here. Sacred Heart really provided um, the background and the inspiration for service and Roswell Park is a great place to be able to demonstrate that and to actually live those values. So describe your relationship with the teachers here at Shea. Were there any in particular that inspired you or motivated you and if so, how? Um, well, there were a few. Um, Sister Mara Walton comes to mind. Um, I had Sister Mara for um, advanced biology uh, and for biology um, many moons ago, as I said. Um, she just was a very warm, very caring individual, but somebody who really um, engaged with her students and sort of was very able to draw out what their what their talents were, really encourage them, was a very motivating force and someone who um, was there to help. If you had a down day or you didn't do well on a test or whatever, would be very encouraging to help you get to the next point. And then the other um, individual was actually um, my basketball coach here. I played basketball, Sister Maria Perez. And a funny story about Sister Maria. Many years after I'd left Sacred Heart, um, my daughter played um, competitive soccer. Um, we were at um, a, a playoff game, and I remember getting out of the car, and all of a sudden I hear this voice, Kaharski, is that you? And my husband said, what, why are you trembling? And I said, oh dear, that's Sister Maria. And he started laughing and he said, at this point, really, you're still trembling? I said, wait till you meet her, you'll be trembling too. <laughs> but she was a force, a force of nature, a wonderful, wonderful woman, wonderful coach. Um, another prime example of the Sacred Heart spirit, um, the Sacred Heart goal. She was a very good, warm person, but somebody who really demanded that you put your best foot forward, and there were no excuses with her. What sparked your interest in the medical field? 
Well, um, I think that actually comes back to Sacred Heart as well. Sacred Heart was always promoted um, service. It always promoted being able to use your talents to help others um, in, in ways that you could. We all have things that we do very well. We have other things that maybe we're not so good at. Um, but using those talents to the best to the best of your ability. And I think nursing is a wonderful profession in the sense that you have an opportunity to um, actually engage with patients and their families at a vulnerable time of their lives. And you do make a difference. It, it's a privilege to be able to work with people and meet people um, at different times in their lives. And, and you know, I credit nursing for all of that. I think it's amazing how you can build a connection with someone, especially when they're feeling alone and you can make them feel like they can get through this. Mm -hmm. I think nurses do so much that we don't realize and I think it's a really demanding career but I think it's very rewarding. But if a nurse is feeling discouraged or anything like that, what do you say to them to keep them going? I think nurses have to have an outlet. I think right now there's a very big push on resiliency and it's resiliency for many different occupations that have especially gone through the pandemic. For nurses, it's being able to have somebody to share that information with. Um, when I worked in the intensive care unit, we had a, a group of nurses that we would we would bond. We so we'd go out for a meal or um, go out after work, and it's being able to share those stories with somebody who understands understands sort of where the patient's at, you know, the, their state, um, what they're going through, etc. Just being able to be there for each other. But it's also being able to take time for yourself. Um, as females, we tend to put everybody else first. We're, we're the caregivers. We're the ones who um, want to make it right. And for a long time, it was at the expense of ourselves. And I think now there's more of a, of a push. And I actually credit your generation for that. The work-life balance is very, very important, and you really have to have that. My last question for you is, what is it like being part of such a huge organization that helps so many Western New Yorkers? It's amazing. It's an amazing place to work. I have to say, I think for me, what's one of the most amazing parts is that from our CEO down to the EVS workers and our environmental um, service workers, People know each other. It's a family there. Um, it isn't unusual to see the CEO walk through and, and be on a first name basis with housekeepers. Um, there is really a bond there. There is um, a feeling of pride that, that we make a difference. Um, there's a big push on recognition. I do think we make a difference. I definitely believe you do. I mean, my mother who's been there for breast cancer and bladder cancer. She loves Roswell. I mean, she's healthy now, but everyone she's met, everyone my family have gotten to meet, they've informed us. I felt like they actually, I mean, they cared. Like yes. they were with us on the journey and I was comfortable. I wasn't scared. I mean, I was yes. scared, but yes. I felt like we had a good team by our side that they kept us informed and really cared about my mother. So, I mean, Roswell, I definitely, I mean, my dream would be to work there because I feel the difference they make is so huge and I loved seeing what they did. I got to meet every, a lot of people over the summer and everyone I met was amazing, so. Wonderful. You're quite an inspiration. Thank you. You too, you too, definitely. Thank you very you, much. You just exude the values of Sacred Heart. You Thank do. you. It's a huge compliment. Jane Geese Rasmussen is a proud member of the class of 1970 and has used her exuberance and leadership to build strong class bonds as well as a remarkable career in technology. Filled with humility, Jane would never consider herself a trailblazer, but that's exactly how Christy LaPlante, a member of Shea's class of 2000, describes her. Jane has been a mentor to Christy and many other professionals, which motivated this well-deserved nomination. You'll hear more 
about Jane's career and volunteer work during her Zoom interview with Ellie Parks, a member of the class of 2022. Ellie plans to study computer science and was thrilled to have the opportunity to spend time with a pioneer in that field. Both Ellie and Jane were so comfortable chatting via Zoom using technology to bring people together is just one of Jane's many strengths. Let's check it out. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm Ellie Parks. I'm a senior here at Sacred Heart, and I'm interested in a career in technology, which is why I get the honor of interviewing you today. Um, so how did you like get involved in the technology fields? So <laughs> at Sacred Heart, I love math and science. And so I just followed what I enjoyed doing and I stuck with it. Um, and then one thing led to another. When I, I started off, they didn't have uh, systems engineering or computer, computer science degrees, but um, I followed through in my senior year of college. I finally took a computer science class and I'm like, oh, this is what I meant to do. So I just kept learning all the time. Mm -hmm. Did you find it difficult being a woman in a predominantly male field, um, especially in the 1970s and 80s? So I went from Sacred Heart to Canisius College, which had just turned to allow uh, women in. So when I was a freshman there, um, they had like three seniors in their class. So that was an eye opener. And then... Um, I, I think I just decided that I was going to follow math. And um, in my first calculus class, the, the professor said, turn to your right, turn to your left. Only one of you will make it through the semester. And literally, there were five females in that class of 70 people, 75 people. And so at that point, I just said, forget about it. Just be true to yourself and follow your passion. Mm -hmm. If you could go back to your time at Sacred Heart, is there anything you would want to change? And if so, why? Wow. There is one thing. Um, when I was a student there, they didn't offer a physics class. And I really enjoyed um, physics. And so I, I would add a physics class. Do they have it now, Ellie? Really? Yeah, they do. We have um, a conceptual physics class, an honors physics class, and we also have AP physics. Oh, so I would I would eat that up. So what are your interests? Oh, my gosh. I love um, math and science as well. And then I'm also taking computer science. We have two AP computer science classes now, too. Okay. Do you have any advice for current Sacred Heart students, especially those interested in pursuing a career in technology? Yeah, the, the big thing is to pursue your passion, you know, do what you enjoy doing and don't, don't worry about being rejected. It's going to happen. And what I've learned too is people will say no <laughs> and you'll be like, oh, but that doesn't mean no forever. One of the things I learned is that when people say no, if you ask a lot of questions and find out why they said no or why something couldn't be done, then you can find out what their concerns are or what the issues are. And then you can think outside of the box on your own or with others and then go back and propose another solution or some options. And then it's kind of interesting. Things start happening. Mm -hmm. So when I started college, I had no idea what I wanted to do or be. I just knew I wanted to do something with math and science. And so I kept a pretty open uh, course load. And so even when I graduated, my career changed. There were jobs out there. By the, so when I started college, and then by the time I graduated, there were job, new jobs out there that did not even exist when I was a freshman in college. So keep your mind and um, 
your mind and your options open because there are new things happening every month, every year, every day. The other thing that I did too, it's real easy when you go to college to get caught up in studying really hard and some people will pull all-nighters. And I made a point to sign up for a, a physical education course. I even took fencing one time just to have a, an opportunity to relieve some stress. So maybe it's meditation or some spirituality, going to church, all thinking about Shay. All right. Do you have anything else you'd want to accomplish in your career, even if it's on like a different career path? Yeah. So um, I had a career that changed. I went through multiple job roles, career roles, and every one of them I built upon. Uh, I learned new skills, new people skills, new technical skills. And I built on it. And so what I'm looking at doing is talking about now is, so what do I want to be when I grow up? <laughs> and it's, it's a never ending question because the world is changing and there's so many wonderful things that are happening in it. I mean, with all the, the noise and everything, there, there's still really cool things going on. And, um, and so what I'm getting involved in now is I'm retired, so I'm able to give back to the community and I'm finding ways that I can use my technical ability, but my skills in working with people and different organizations to help uh, uh, with the community and people and, and, and helping out with just some people's normal lives. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have um, any inspiration that inspires you to continue um, pursuing your goals in your career, whether that be like a teacher you had at Sacred Heart or a friend or a family member? Yeah. So definitely my dad, um, he, he coached me to pursue um, my love of science and math. And then when I think about all the classes, grade school, high school, college, Shay was really pivotal in my life because that's where I learned to be me and pursue what I enjoyed doing. And um, so it, it's really all my teachers, my classmates at Shea, um, Sister Mara comes to mind. She would bring a toy um, to school and we'd have the weekend to figure out how the, the toy works scientifically. The students today. So I Zoomed with um, Charlotte, she's a junior now, and she taught me some things I didn't know about Zoom. And we Zoomed together like two years ago when COVID started. And it was like, that inspires me, you know, to, to see um, people like you, Ellie, you know, chatting with me and, and thinking about what you want to do and pursue. And I'm like, ah, I better get my game together and, and start updating myself. <laughs> J. Edward Ned Cuddy and Jean Arns Cuddy made a powerful team. Individually, they worked for peace, championed for the underserved, and advocated for women's equality in professional pursuits. Together, they raised six remarkable daughters and inspired each of them to carry on a legacy of Franciscan values. Jean reflects on her life with Ned as a 60-year gift, a gift she's very grateful for. Carrying on the Shea tradition, her granddaughter Emily Fisher is a current Shea senior. The two spend time reminiscing and catching up in the Shea library. Hi Nana, welcome. You, you were nominated for the Franciscan Award. How does that feel? Very special. <laughs> good, good. Now, you were the first president of the Lake Erie region for the National Federation of Catholic College Students. How did that make I was the first woman president. We had been, uh, there were seven Catholic colleges in the region at the time. And uh, the year that I was elected, it wasn't even a thought as special because I just happened to be elected, and I think that the the uh, 
issue of a woman being president of something didn't come in until the 90s or into 2000. My, uh, it, was, it was one of those issues that you didn't think of it as, oh my goodness, I'm a woman and they're electing me. It was, um, it was an honor, but it wasn't anything. You didn't think anything of it? I didn't think anything of it. My mother was a very strong person who uh, was widowed when she was 32. And she took over the ownership of our house where we lived. But at that time, until probably the 80s, women were not supposed to own houses. So just even though it was by default, she was an unusual person to a good role model. Yeah, okay. really. Yeah. Now, how many years did you teach at Sacred Heart? I taught here for 10 years mm. and left uh, my daughter Karen we had a serious illness when she was 18. I took the year off for that and then taught one more year and then left. And do you think your time here had any influence on your own life in any way? Oh, I'm sure it did. It was, uh, it was uh, a great uh, way to get to know the next generation. And then I I struggled for a year in deciding what I was going to do after that and eventually took it past my Series 7 financial planning exam and spent the last 37 years in financial planning. Wow. And you still do that a little bit, right? I still do that a little bit. Now, um, Dr. Cuddy, your late husband, yes. he was also a very um, influential leader at Damon College. Do you think he had an influence on your own students here at Sacred Heart? He taught at Damon for 50 years, and everybody knew him and loved him. And that was, it was not unusual for him to uh, establish really very good relationships with them. So, and he was, uh, he was a natural leader. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. And not that you were looking for a guy, but you did find Papa. <laughs> well, you know, Papa found me. And I might as well take this moment to straighten that thing out. <laughs> because <laughs> the... Um, I was a, I was a senior. Now I never I never dated a professor. Right. I never dated a professor. You don't believe me? Do no, you? I do. I swear, I believe you. <laughs> but um, he, uh, we we had a father daughter dinner, and my father had died when I was four years old, so I didn't have a father. A friend of mine, his father. Um, decided that he would take her to the father-daughter dinner and ask if I would go along. And I agreed. And when we um, started coming home, Ned did not have a ride home. So he asked Mr. Lee if he could ride, take him a ride with him. And uh, very quickly as we got to my house, there was this bustle of wanting to walk me to the door, <clears throat> which was kind of unusual. And at that point, he asked me to go to my senior prom, which was the day after my graduation. <laughs> now, Papa has also been nominated for this award. Can you tell us a little bit about his activism during the Vietnam War? Yes. First of all, he uh, had been in the seminary and left to go to a master's program at Catholic U. And that was where he had been hired by Rosary Hill. Uh, so he came having had that master's degree. It was my freshman year in, no, it was my senior year. In, college. And he uh, was very obsessed with the decisions that were being made around the Vietnam War. And it was a, a situation where 
you, you, when you were living in it, you didn't know what you could do, but it was wrong. And so he started, he was one of the original founders of the Western New York Peace Center. And that brought him together with other people who had similar attitudes towards this. He, he was uh, just becoming more and more frustrated with these things. <clears throat> and um, at the time, our, our discussion was around how active or how uh, impassioned was the, the threats of Vietnam uh, on our local community. Rosary Hill did not feel a sense of being in the thick of the demonstrations. Uh, we were a very quiet community where UB saw the demonstrations and so forth. So he was, he was getting his master's in history at, I'm sorry, getting his master's, his PhD at UB and was kind of brought into some of the demonstrations that were there. That was uh, a driving force for him and until the year, a year ago, he was still an active member of the Western New York Peace Center. Wow. Yeah. Not only that, he um, continued to do like community service. I remember he was like 86, it was only a couple years ago, he was like down on his hands and knees um, doing Habitat for Humanity. Yes, he was. He did take out, he, he volunteered with Habitat for Humanity and he also volunteered with the uh, with the friends of night people, friends of night people, and he would uh, work there until ten thirty at night, and then find his way home in the snow and the ice and, and what have you. Very compassionate. He, yes, he was. He was. That's a very good word for it. He was very compassionate, and uh, it put his heart into everything that he did. He did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> including the, including the family. Yeah. He was very proud of you guys. He was, we have 18 grandchildren, and he was just bursting with pride with, the, yeah. with all of you. I tell this story because for those of you who didn't know it, in his last couple of years, he had stages of Alzheimer's and uh, expressive aphasia where he couldn't put the words together to what their meaning was. And it was extremely frustrating for him. We got to the stage where we would be able to indicate by gestures what it was that he wanted. And, and by the way, he was still going to mass daily until about six months ago. And it was at that point I had decided I wasn't going to drive in the ice and snow to get him there. And it wasn't safe for him to walk. But anyway, he, uh, <laughs> he uh, sat, he, your brother Matthew came in from the University of Vermont to use practice on our piano. And he played the, he sat down and played the piano with that Papa sat down next to him and started playing. And all of a sudden, we heard the entire suite from Rhapsody and Boom played by Papa. Now this is a man who couldn't put two words together or, or say anything that meant anything, but he played the entire Rhapsody and Boom from memory. And when we went back to Chuck the piano, all the Rhapsody and Blue music was upset. <laughs> <laughs> Purely from memory. <laughs> Purely from memory. I love that video. But he could not have done anything without you. Like, you were his backbone. Like, you guys were like together, always. Two peas in a pod. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we had uh, 60 wonderful years. Yeah. That was to be grateful for because. <clears throat> when I was growing up, I said to before that my father died when I was just shy of four years old, and my mother was widowed at 32, and spent the next 60 years, she lived to 92, never driving a car, um, using the bus wherever she went, did as much as she could, um, 
and uh, it was a very, very strong influence on me, but I kept thinking, I'm not going to have 60 years, I'm going to have, you know, when are we going to have to be split up? And so I think we were very, uh, very blessed to have lived through the uh, seeing of our daughters having very successful careers mm -hmm. and our grandchildren, each of them, I think there's uh, probably 12 out of the 18 now that are in successful professions of their own and the others are still in grade, uh, grammar school or high school and uh, I'm confident that they will carry on the way their their own families did. Now all the um, daughters want to say good heart, was that very important for you? To have them get a share education? Well, I, I asked, the, the first time I asked my daughter Karen and my daughter Bibi, who the first the two oldest, why they chose Sacred Heart. And Mimi made the comment the other day that uh, she was influenced by one of her father's former students, and she had asked this person to be her confirmation sponsor. We had become quite close. <clears throat> and uh, she never stopped raving about Sacred Heart. Um, and it was it, when, she, when Mimi was looking for a choice of schools, she just thought that that was the only place that she wanted to go because of what Marcy said. I, I'm very uh, thrilled that Sacred Heart has continued its reputation uh, in leadership, and in religious uh, conviction and um, the, the fact that they are a very strong influence on young women's lives. It can't be the tra traditions. This is the tradition, <laughs> that's right. Your, your mother was here, your, uh, all of your aunts, and I would think that you would line up with the rest of them when yeah. it comes to your graduation. My sister. In me. fact, I think we probably have one of the white gowns for you. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo Academy of the Sacred Heart continues to be a place that empowers young women through excellence in education. We have seen many wonderful examples of that tonight in our current students and honorees. Annually, this event helps underwrite scholarships that enable Shay to attract the best and brightest students. Your gift through participation in our art auction or a scholarship donation supports that goal. So thank you for joining us tonight, either in person or from home. It was a pleasure for me to help welcome you and congratulate each of these deserving award winners. Again, congratulations. Thank you for the privilege of your time and have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you.